Hi everybody, we're back with Inventory Costing. We're using Fundamentals of Financial Accounting by Kimmel Wagen Chieso and we're working on chapter number three. So right now we're going to look at 6-2A and this is basically utilizing three methods of inventory, FIFO, LIFO and average cost under the periodic inventory system. The question says Dyna Distribution Market CDs of the performing artist King James at the beginning of March Dyna had and in beginning inventory 1500 King James CDs with a unit cost of $7. During March Dyna made the following purchases of King James CDs and we've got four purchases throughout the month. During March 10,000 units were sold and Dyna uses a periodic inventory system. We want to determine the cost of goods available for sale but we're going to just going to put this into a format that's easier to understand. Uh, so we recognize how many units we have, what the per unit cost is, and what the total cost is. Now, we start from the beginning of the information given. So if beginning inventory was 1,500 units at a cost of $7, we'd put 1,500 units at a cost of $7 per unit. To calculate total cost, we'll simply take $7 multiplied by 1,500. And so we've got 10,500 there. And then we'll do the same for our first set that's on the 5th of March. We have 3,500 units at a cost of 8, so that's 8 multiplied by 3,500. And then moving forward, 9 multiplied by 4,000. And 10 multiplied by 2,000. And 11 multiplied by 2,000. Okay, so this basically means that our total cost for our full inventory during this particular time period is 11,000. Uh, one, sorry, $116,500. This is the total cost of our inventory. And the same question arises over here for how many units we have available. To take the sum of all of our units. And so this tells us that we have 13,000 units available at a total cost of $116,500. So we've answered part A. The cost of goods available for sale is $116,500. We can go ahead and make a note over here, just in case. Cost of goods available for sale. Okay. Uh, now we want to do part B and part B says determine the ending inventory and cost of goods sold under each of the assumed cost flow methods and prove the accuracy of the cost of goods sold under the LIFO and FIFO methods. Now, um, remember what FIFO and LIFO and average cost actually means. We're going to go through this one more time as we do this question. So FIFO means first in, first out. Now we solve this under the FIFO method. What we want to do is first in, first out means the inventory that you have on hand from the beginning of that particular time period will be sold first. Now in this particular case, out of 13,000 units, we've sold 10,000 units. So we want to complete 10,000 units. We'll take 1,500 from the very first set. That's 1,500 times 7 to give us 10,500. Then we'll take our 3,500 at a cost of 8 to give us 28,000. And then we'll take our 4,000. We have not reached our 10,000 sold units yet, so we're still good. Right now, however, we've reached 9,000 units. So 4,000 plus 3,500 plus 1,500 will give us a total of 9,000 units. We want to complete 10,000 units. So lastly, we're going to take 1,000 units from the 21st of March inventory. So it's a thousand units at a cost of ten dollars per unit and that will give us a uh, thousand units at a cost of ten dollars per unit will give us ten thousand dollars and if you want to do the calculation that's just ten multiplied by a thousand and so now just to cross check we want to ensure that we've got the right number of units we want to take the sum of all of these and we get 10,000, so we've got 10,000 units sold. We're doing the right calculation here. And again, we want to calculate the sum of the total cost, and that's 84,000, sorry, it's $84,500. And this represents our cost of goods sold. And against this, we also want to be able to calculate the ending inventory. So the ending inventory is whatever remains. And when we took $1,000 out of this 2,000, that means that we have 1,000 remaining at a cost of $10 per unit. That's $10,000 in our inventory and the last set of our inventory 2,000 units at a cost of $11 per unit for a total of 22,000. Again we want to take the sum over here and that's 3,000 units there and for our cost we'll take the sum here as well as it's 32 
thousand, and this is our ending inventory. So now we've got the number of units in ending inventory as well as their cost. And then just to cross check, how can we verify that the number that we have is in fact correct? What we want to do is we want to take the sum of our units. Uh, so we can actually just say, add your ending inventory units to your cost of goods sold units and that 13,000 should match with the total number of units that were available for sale. And similarly, you want to take your ending inventory cost and you want to add into it your cost of goods sold and that should it be equal to your cost of goods available for sale in dollar terms. And that's exactly what you get. So the answer is verified. Okay. Um, then we have to complete our average cost method. And so for the, I'm sorry, that's our FIFO method. Now let's do our LIFO method. LIFO method stands for last in first out. I want to take the sim a similar approach to this. I'm just going to go ahead over here and um, freeze these panes so that you can see it a little bit easier. Okay, there we go. So we won't we won't sort of miss out on our inventory amounts, right? So now let's take LIFO. So LIFO stands for last in first out, which means when we sell 10,000 units, we're actually starting from the most recent inventory. So we're going to pick up the inventory as we have it. So we want 2,000 units from here. We want 2,000 units from here. Last in, first out. We're going backwards from our most recent inventory. We'll take 4,000 units from here. Whoopsies. Here we go. Take 4,000 units from here. And then we've got a total of 8,000 units over here. We want to complete 10,000. So we're going to take 2,000 units at a cost of $8 per unit from this particular inventory. And so we get eight multiplied by 2,000 gives us 16,000. And now we wanna calculate the number of units that we have sold, 10,000, that is the correct number. And so we hold on to our calculation there. And again, we wanna calculate how much the cost of goods sold is. And in this case, this is $94,000 for our cost of goods sold. So if this is our cost of goods sold, we can also calculate our ending inventory. And our ending inventory basically means if we took 2,000 units from our $8 inventory last, that means we've got 1,500 remaining at the cost of $8. So that's eight multiplied by 1,500 gives us 12,000. And of course, we've got our 1,500 units at a cost of seven for a cost total cost of $10,500. One more time, we wanna sum up our inventory here to ensure we've got the right number. We've got 3,000 units left in our ending inventory, so that is correct. And the cost of our ending inventory is $22,500. And this is our ending inventory. Now, again, to verify, we wanna ensure that we have the right numbers. We're gonna take the sum of our inventory and our cost of goods sold. We get 116,500, which equals our cost of goods available for sale, and that is correct. And just the final cross check, we wanna take the sum of the units in our ending inventory and the number of units sold, that's 13,000. So that means that our question is verified. That's our LIFO cost. And now what we wanna do is we wanna calculate our average cost. Okay, so the average cost method is basically like an, a weighted average. Um, we wanna take the total number of, the total cost of our inventory. We basically wanna calculate the cost per unit and it's gonna be the average cost per unit. And so what we'll do is we'll take the total cost that is 116,500 divided by the total number of units that are present. So it's 116,500 divided by 13,000 units. And so that'll be equal to this divided by that. And that tells you that your average cost per unit is $8.96. We just wanna decrease the decimal places on that for, uh, to avoid confusion. Okay, there we go. Um, now that you have your cost per unit, we can simply cal calculate our cost of goods sold and our ending inventory. And so our cost of goods sold is going to be, uh, we sold 10,000 units, and that will be 10,000 multiplied by 8.96. And our ending inventory will be the remaining 3,000 units that we have at a cost of 8.96, that's 226,884. And how do we verify that these numbers are in fact correct? We just wanna take the sum of both of these values 
and we get 116,500. You know that this is correct. And this is how we calculate the three cost flow methods. Which cost flow method results in the lowest inventory amount for the balance sheet and the lowest cost of goods sold for the income statement? That's very easy. We just go back through our method. So our cost of goods sold is to be recorded in our inventory or it shows, sorry, it's recorded, it shows in our income statement. And so if we compare our LIFO and our FIFO, our cost of goods sold is lower under the FIFO method. So FIFO will result in a lower cost of goods sold for the income statement, this answering, answering C part two. And then if we see the cost of our ending inventory, our ending inventory is 22,500 in LIFO, so that's a lower amount of the balance sheet inventory, that's answering part C, uh, part one. And that is that. Thank you very much. If you've got any questions, please comment below.